Welcome to the Town of Acton, Maine Selectman's Meeting for July 19th, 2016. First order is salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of the agenda. I move we approve the agenda. I second. All, in, all uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Call for vote. All in favor? All opposed? Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I move that we approve the minutes of the last meeting. And I second. Moved and seconded we approve the minutes of the last meeting. Any discussion? Nope. Okay, call for vote. All in favor? All opposed? Department heads and committee chair updates. We have no one here tonight for that, so Beautiful. we will Actually, move. under um, my Mary Grant memo, do you want to, I did put it under the appointments on a new business. Did you want to read the memo from the department under that? We can just do that on a new business. Okay. Sure. Okay, old business. We have the uh, foreclosed properties tax sale. The deadline is August 12th, 2016. Yep. Anything um, else to add to that? Nope, just waiting for the time to come and go. The minimum bids are out there. Everything's online. Okay, sounds great. Library repairs. So I um, was finally able to catch up with the other individual that we, we had originally gotten a price from. Um, so we were comparing the Dr. Energy Saver to um, uh, a some information we got from that was essentially going to be outsourced and I know that you and I had a conversation about this um, so I spoke to the original contractor to confirm that he really would be subcontracting it out and kind of got some information on it um, because it, it was the same thing it was a, the um, basically the same information and this one was already a couple of thousand dollars higher um, I didn't bother getting an updated quote because this one was lower and we know that he'll grant this one so even if he matched his original this still would have been lower so okay. um, the recommendation and I, I've talked to um, Elise some as the librarian uh, director is if the board will um, authorize the um, three inch R20 to be sprayed and done now we can kind of see where we're headed and where what our budget looks like um, at the next meeting I'm hoping that we can start talking about um, having the library done out front the the walkway we need to have the stairs out back done um, so kind of start talking about uh, about that and what direction you want to go in but sure. um, this 1560 that was kind of a follow-up from the last fiscal year and the prior board um, he's ready to go and get that spray foam in there. They're going to hold that price. They're going to hold that price. Um, okay. And I think that, and, and Elise, feel free to correct me. We kind of talked about this, the air system. Because the, um, because the siding wasn't approved, if we do the front portion of that library um, to match everything else, it'll have to come out of building maintenance. Right. So I think that because the, um, we had kind of agreed that since the walkway has to be done, the doors need to be replaced, that that front entrance of siding might be more important coming out of building maintenance this year than possibly the air system, and maybe we would move that to next fiscal year. That, that's okay with the library? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the air system, um, that's a stone foundation under there, correct? Under the library? I believe I think it's, it's stone, on... stone and granite. Yeah. I think it gets a fair amount of air movement in there anyway. If we can, if we can just seal up the floor, make the floor insulated, I think that's the, the best bang for the buck. And I think that was the biggest concern, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said the floors are very cold. Yeah. So, and if they're uninsulated and there's air movement under there, it's going to be cold. So, yeah. I'd probably want to do some more research before we did that air handler anyway, so. Right, and we had talked about, um, Elise and I, about the whole building. I mean, there may be some other pieces that you have yep. to look at. So, I mean, the goal is to keep the library as, as warm as possible and tighten it up. And right. I think that um, based on how it left at the last fiscal year, and like I said, what the prior board approved, this should be a good start. And that's not going to, even, that's not going to hurt our building maintenance account based right. on the right. budget not we being We put a updated. new furnace, a new heating system in there last year. Carpet. which is more energy efficient. We carpeted it. We had to apply with the floor before we carpeted. Yeah. So it's all, the whole place has been been uh, made better anyway. So 
And the doors the last... are part of the entrance. Right. So um, that will be a big part too. Yep. Elise um, and I are going to work together on what kind of design she's looking for in the front. So we'll present with the selectmen. And when I say Elise and I, this is as the library director. Um, she'll put together kind of what she wants the board to look at in regards to, you know, will we have two doors? Will we make one a window? Will she seal up one all together? Mm -hmm. So I think that doing that front too is going to be the final piece of really tightening up the heat in that building. Yeah. 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 And it's the, the front of that building is the last of the front of these buildings, right. the front and the sides that needs to be done. And uh, it, I spoke to Ken. I mean, it's almost impossible to do the new um, walkway or ramp or whatever yeah. the library decides they want um, without doing that siding. Right. Um, right. But our prices look like we're going to be able to pull everything off. Okay. Hopefully. So I guess next step we just need a, a motion to... Yep, to so do this the, is the, uh, um, just this one, Bill. Motion to spend that amount for just the spray, the cell spray, if that's what you... I move that uh, <clears throat> we, we approve the uh, $1,560 price of uh, reducing the moisture and odors in the crawl space. Yeah, that's for the, uh, for the spray foam. Yeah, we do. Yeah, right above it. That one there. Oh, uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the other one. Okay, this is for, for insulating okay. the insulating the floor. Okay. I should move then that uh, fifteen hundred and sixty dollar be approved for uh, the library floor uh, foaming of the uh, crawl space. Yep. Okay. Moved and seconded that we. I second. Use uh, is it Doctor Energy Saver is the name of the company? Yes. Yeah, it's a subsidiary. Doctor Energy Saver. Yeah, that's a subsidiary of DB of. Uh, DF Rashad, I think, oil. Right. So, okay, moved and seconded to spend the fifteen hundred and sixty dollars to spray foam insulate the library. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any further discussion? No, hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Very good. Yeah, I think it's going to make a big difference. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Next is so we'll. Do you want to ask the library director to schedule that? Yes, I will. Um, we'll, the town will need to see proof of workers' comp and insurance, so we'll okay. get together on that. Uh, next item is the chatter. I have some read material for you. Pass those down. Um, if you would allow, so just the top page, on this is kind of information for you guys to take home, but if you go to the very bottom of the first page, it says, good afternoon, on to the second page. A citizen came before the selectmen at a recent meeting and asked them to consider weighing the pros and cons of the town of Acton voting in a charter. Uh, I looked on your website and didn't see a lot of recent information. Do you have any resources the board could use to weigh? So uh, Susan Pilgrim, one of the attorneys at Maine Municipal, replied. Um, and just want to point out a couple of things that she says in here. Um, so Jennifer, we have information on the procedures involving creating a charter commission and adopting a charter in the information packet. And she references the um, address. I did go to that address and the attachments came from that for your reading pleasure. Some, uh, some of that information may be dated because most parts of the law have not changed in many years. The packets itself has been reviewed and updated for recent minor changes. The only other publication that she could locate was from the 2014 legal notes and that's also um, in your packet. She goes on to say that I'm not sure what issues are spurring the request and would be glad to give more information on particular subjects if needed. My own view is that there is no need or benefit to adopting a municipal charter unless the municipality wishes to move to a council form of government and or move some or all legislative powers away from town meeting to a council or select board. So unless you want to change that form of government or want to accomplish something that can only be accomplished through a charter, I think most municipalities find general law to be sufficient. So um, the 2009 legal note summarizes the issues that can only be altered via charter. So let me know if you have more questions. So um, again, with your okay, we can uh, just kind of take this information. You can read it for the next week or two, and maybe we can... Um, touch on it again towards the end of the month and see if you've had a chance and figure out what you want to do from there. Okay. Sounds Is good. Is that pleasable to the board? Yes. Sounds good to me. It's fine with you. Yeah. Fine with you, Bill? Yeah. It'll be a quiz, Bill, next week. <laughs> we may need two weeks on two that weeks. one for that packet. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. New business. Some of the main veterans. They are not I um, may have miscommunicated, but I thought from uh, the email 
change that uh, we had going back and forth that uh, someone was going to be here tonight from the Southern Maine Veterans Association. Um, basically, um, I invited them based on the questions that had kind of been had the last couple of uh, weeks in regards to the Warren Finance recommendation, the board's recommendation, where exactly does that money go. Um, I did let them know that the warrant was already posted and the town meeting um, was going to be on the 28th, so they were welcome to come to that as well, so maybe their intentions are there. So. Um, it's got a lot of good information about where it goes, the monuments that they've worked on, and where they're, where they're heading with it. So um, hopefully they'll be pre present at, on the 28th to share that with the townspeople. Sounds great. Next is the fire rescue building at the fairgrounds. So I learned something new this week, or last week, it's only Tuesday. Um, the, so when you go into the fairground, the small white building that the fire and rescue always sit at and security always sit at, um, that building was owned by the Acton Ambulance Association. You probably really? know that. No, you I did not, not own that, know that Neither one. Neither did I. So that, that white building, like I said, where fire, it's a three-parted building. It's three different locks. So fire would go in one, rescue would go in one, and we allowed the fair security to go in the third one. Um, so I got a call from the fair association president and um, he wasn't aware of when the Accident Ambulance Association dissolved that we really were just merging it as a town department. I think the fair was looking at it as like a, oh my goodness, are we still going to have ambulance and fire coverage? What's going on? So through a conversation, he's the one that told me that the, the building was the Ambulance Association. Mm -hmm. So I went on to call uh, Mr. Catanzi, and uh, he was aware that it was an um, Ambulance Association building, which now makes it a Town of Acton building. Um, I've gotten some research through um, the Smiths. Um, Harold Smith was very helpful in regards to when it was built and, and kind of the background on it. Um, and then I turned to our attorneys for some advice. Um, and you may know where, where this is going. It is not recommended that we continue to own that building, um, especially on someone else's property. Uh, it is a liability for the town. Um, we are... With the board's approval, the town's attorney will draft up um, an agreement, essentially, between the town of Acton and the Agricultural Association, giving them the building um, with the clause that for as long as there ever remains to be an Acton fair, um, that our fire and rescue have, you know, first refusal at, at using that building. Um, I want to make sure that it's clear that the fair, the, I mean, they were, they're very, they, are in, in, they seem to be in agreement with that. They definitely want us there. They are very appreciative of the time and effort that our people put in there. They know the importance of having it right by the, the exit, it, by it being air conditioned. and So I don't think there's any concerns that way, but the, the bigger concern is the insurance piece and the liability um, and what's covered and not covered under torque because it's not the town property. And um, I don't know why he, would, why he would recommend that we don't own the building. Because we're, we're liable if anything happens. Okay. And I, I guess if you, um, without going too much into that, we could, com we could schedule an executive session with the attorney um, so that he could give you the pros and cons of liability um, of town buildings on private property. The difference, from what I understand, is the town property versus private property. Okay. So. Okay. Again, it's not, mean, not something that has to happen right away. Right. Um, right. I mean, you can lease a piece of land and have a building on it. You can as a regular person, but municipalities fall under a different... Um, okay. Okay. Is there a, a reason that you think that you would want the town to, to own the building? No, just the fact that, uh, to me, it makes more sense, but... That's you know I guess that's the only building maybe where on the fairground where a town and and you know a, a town entity versus a private private, private thing don't mesh. They also so. um, they do own every other building on their property. Right. Um, so that's the only one that's not not theirs. And again, um, can I have permission to schedule an executive session so you can have a conversation with the attorney? I mean I don't know if we need to get that involved with it. Well, I just want to be able to I want you to be able to hear the specific reasons without. Yeah. broadcasting them because you know in the yeah. town's best interest oh, yeah. I guess I just take unless you unless you two want to have an executive session with him well know, it's not just him I've spoken I mean and also the fire and rescue I, mean, I only spoke to, to Harold Harold yeah. and actually and Rick Smith both of their first things were you know turn it over get rid of it okay well um, if, if they're recommending it and the attorney recommends it I guess I'll 
guess I wouldn't have too much of a um, I, can, I have not spoken to Dave, so I certainly can do that. And I can, um, I have been yeah. speaking to Steve Johnson for other things um, mm -hmm. over the last few days, last week. Can try to get some information from him as well. Yeah. No, I guess, I, I mean, I, I hate to spend the money on the attorney. I don't know what happened the entire time the Ambulance Association owned it. They may have still had liability. I don't know. All I know is that when we took over, they wrote us a bill of sale, turning over all their assets to the town. Okay. So it's town property now. Um, what happened while the association owned it and their liability i don't know and there's a difference too between a private entity liability and a municipal okay. liability um yeah. so yeah i, I can't answer on behalf of someone yeah. else mm -hmm. i know i know part of the history of it was it used to be an ambulance body sitting down there yes and that body off of an ambulance that's what they use as a Little yeah, triage apparently room. they rebuilt it many uh, you know what in the 80s from I think what Harold said they put a small slab under it and they put um, the building and put the you know the yeah it might have been the 90s that building went in there but it was 80s, 90s. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Robin when that building went in yeah, late 90s. Yeah. from what I understand too is that it's never ever been used by the Acton Ambulance Association for anything other than a fair other than the fair yeah. Um, so they don't have any other interest in it. <laughs> no, I don't know. Does the security company use it any other times of the year down there? No. No? Um, we do let them, if they have a function down there, we do let them use the security part of that building. Okay. That's the only part they use. Three different doors, the, three uh, different locks. Yeah. Three different spots in there. Yeah. I know in past years we had a problem with it being broken into, and they did a lot of damage one year, yeah. and then we boarded the building completely up, all the windows and doors, and that took care of that problem. So, but, okay. Yep. I guess it's as long as we know we can, the town can still use it right. I mean, you know, as, was, as its intended use. Right. Because it and is very would, handy down there. I mean, it's worth and, having. And that would be the stipulation. And I said that to um, the fair president. He, and I said, you know, we don't want to see you make an ice cream shack out of it. And he said, no, no, no. We, let me be clear. We want your guy, your women and men there. We yeah. appreciate everything about you. I mean, the, the call was initiated originally because he heard the merge and wasn't didn't realize that it was now a town department and that nothing was going to change. Um, like I said, I've spoken to the uh, chiefs. Nothing's going to change now that they're a town department as far as staffing down there. And he was thrilled to hear that. That you know, it was just a coincidence that we found out the whole building piece of it. Yep. Okay. Did you did you talk to the attorney about leasing it or anything like that? No. Nope. No. Okay. I can. Just a thought. Yeah. You know, if they, if the fairgrounds, for instance, would sign a, a long-term lease. So it goes back to another question to the attorney. So I'm going to encourage you again to hear what he has to say in regards maybe, to liability. Maybe we should. <laughs> Only, I mean, if you if you want to pursue it, you know, if we're going to pursue it some yeah. way, we might as well um, have the executive session so that you can hear. I think that if we have all the information, it just makes it easier to answer to taxpayers why we are not holding on to it. It does. Yep. Okay. okay. So we'll yeah, schedule that so schedule that you can. Okay. okay. Okay with you, Bill? Schedule a. Yep. Okay. Just so you can hear all the pros and cons. Yep. Okay. Okay. Next is public comment. Oh, this is the. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, Mary Grant. I skipped right over. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I get ahead of myself. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, next is uh, Mary Grant memo and appointments. The memo is from Barbara Seeker, dated 719 of 16. It says, good morning. The la last evening, a gathering of friends and persons interested in going to the Mary Grant Nature Preserve. After chatting, it was decided, since we would not make any moves until the new board was informed, well, was formed, the following names would like to be submitted to the board uh, of selectmen for approval of the Mary Grant Committee. And we have Jean Achilles. The circled ones are the ones that are known? Uh, correct. Okay. There's seven names on the list here, but some of them have not been contacted by uh, Ms. Rue to uh, confirm. So we have Jean Achilles, we have Christine Bowden, Bowden. Mm -hmm. Bowden, Holly Mooney, and Barbara Seeker. Uh, let's see. 
There are others that are interested in serving, but the names will come later. So. So those, the ones that I'm um, a circle, the ones that I've actually, actually confirmed that they're interested. I'm sure that um, that Barbara has reached out to the other ones, but I haven't personally spoken to them yet. Okay. Um, and didn't yeah, know if you, if you wanted information on the new members or. Sure. Right? But those are the four that we spoke to. Okay. But if you want, I can reach out to the other three and put them on next week's. Probably should. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and if they're interested in, in being on it, that be it's a great thing. We just have to make sure it's confirmed through the the office to make sure. Is there a certain amount of people on the committee? If that's seven, and there's still others that. Well, everyone else uh, that would be on there would be expired. All the terms expired June 30th. Um, that's one of the other things that I, I, I'll be honest with you, I can't, I can't answer. Um, Barbara's probably yelling at her television, telling me how many numbers there are. But <laughs> we're, that's why I'm trying to find the original when it was created. Because as, as I said to mention to Barbara and mention to, to Ed, as far as the resident, non-resident, um, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I don't know the answer because how it depends on how the town originally created it so until i can put my hands on that we're back to about 2003 and right now we're looking at uh, the board reviewed easements of the creation of mary grant so i think that we're close um, something else just came up today so hopefully when we find how it was created it'll say how many members and if they can be residents non-residents or if there's any stipulations on them right i know one of the other names that we have on the list here that chisholm confirmed with is someone that has been on the board but has since moved out of town and it really would be a shame to lose that individual um, and not be able to put him on the on the Mary Grant. So, okay, we have four names here. Let's see: certificate of appointment, selectman's office, municipality of Acton, Maine. It says to Barbara Seeker, the selectman of the municipality of Acton, do in accordance with the provisions of the laws of the state of Maine, hereby appoint you Mary Grant committee member within and for the municipality of Acton, Maine. June 30th, 2017, given under the hand this 19th day of July, 2016. All these are the same readings, just different names. That one is for Barbara Seeker. I think I'll just need to read off the four names and we can do it as a group or do you want to do them individually? Okay, so we have Barbara Seeker, we have Jean Achilles, we have Christine Bowden, and we have Holly Mooney. Once again, these are all a one-year appointment to the, Holly, to the uh, Mary Grant committee what's your pleasure I move that we appoint the four um, people to the Mary Grant Nature Preserve Committee okay until June 30th 2017 second moved and seconded we appoint Barbara Seeker Gina Achilles Christine Bowden and Holly Mooney to the Mary Grant committee it's been moved and seconded any further discussion Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Great. So if it is a seven-member board, if it happens to be that, they have a they have a quorum. So. Mm -hmm. and I, I did have a conversation with uh, Lorraine Yetten as well, and and she kind of pointed out too. She said to me, you know, go ahead and appoint the people that that want to be on. If you've got some younger new blood that want to help out and she said you know her for example that she would still continue to help and volunteer you know even as a non-committee member right. so okay she was um willing to step back once again another person in town that's a wealth of mm. wealth of knowledge on these and we don't want to exclude them by any stretch While he's signing, can go back, if we go back to the Dr. Energy Saver, uh, there is a place for two signatures. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Lucy. Oh. We'll, we'll do the other one there. Probably would make sense for Bill and I to sign that as opposed to yes. the director oh, yes. from the, of the library. I was trying to wink at her to abstain. But did she you? Did <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I was going to wait till after camera, but that's, that's what I was making face So you tonight. crossed off all the other words yeah, and changed the numbers? I'll, before okay. I let him have it, I'll, I'll probably type a little blurb at the bottom. Okay. Um, but I'll make sure that the minutes are attached and he knows what he can do. Oh, 
I would hope to see some savings on that insulation. I would imagine. You should Indeed. anyways, just from the furnace and the... Yeah. yeah. The eye doing the walls down there too with, with two and a half inches and three inches in the floor. So yeah. that will tighten up the, uh, the stone and, and uh, granite foundation some too, so. Plus the front door. Yeah, we get snow drifts under that in the winter. Wait. <laughs> Shovel it out of the entryway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, public comment. Anyone from the public wish to speak on anything? Anything at all? I have one thing. Come right up, sir. The tree that's out front by the yes. sign. The dead one. That's, uh, exactly. I would, would like to see if I could and get rid of that. I don't think that is dead, isn't it? There's not much left to that. It only, there's only about three limbs on the bottom that's really, if you want to take a look at it and let me know, but I was looking at, at it today, was, it looked kind of like a yeah. sore thumb sticking out in the middle of the, the area. I was changing the sign letters out there the last time around and it was, I noticed it wasn't the greatest. Right, so I was just so, getting you guys' opinion I on don't have an issue. I, don't know. I didn't want to take it upon myself yeah. and just kind of I don't want to step about. on any toes as to why or who planted it, but well, years ago, they were going to put the tree lighting out there, right. but it never, never yeah. formed. Well, power it. never got out there. Yeah. Right. Well, right. So. I don't have an issue. I mean, the tree's dead. It's not, it is more of an eyesore than it is anything right. else. So. So, but I just thought I'd bring it can... to you and let you guys make that yep. decision. So maybe if it's, to... yeah, I'd say go right ahead okay. if that's okay with you two. Yes, I'd... Yeah. That's the only Fine. thing I have. Yeah. Maybe Thank someone you. out there in TV land would like to donate another nice tree and we can some sort of a Christmas, Christmassy type looking tree and we can. Well, something killed the tree. It's probably all the salt. Yeah, maybe we can move it back. Well, or we have that uh, other tree. A little something too. A new too. Christmas tree over here, remember? Yeah, it looks awful nice though down front it's there. It would look really, it would be, it would be a nice yeah. center no, part I know. of the town, so. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on power out there, so. We'll, Good. we'll come up with something, so. Okay, anything else in the public? No? Announcements, we have the special town meeting coming up. Um, July 28th, that is at six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah, warrants are posted, warrants are online. Here at the town hall. Now we have some committee openings. The 28th. 28th of July. Yep. Um, that's a special town meeting. We have numerous committee openings. You have the list of what we have open, or just call the town hall for? Um, I, I did print it off. I just okay. somehow between now it's and then. A, it's been a busy so, afternoon. It has. Um, so Mary Grant, um, which looks like we may be, may be able to have that filled, so that's great. Uh, Mary Grant was on the list. Um, from town meeting, there was one road committee seat that was not filled. There is one alternate planning board member seat, and there is one alternate warrant and finance committee seat. Um, in addition, we have the rec. I was just going to mention that the rec department. We desperately need someone to handle the rec department. Um, I've times add in the newspaper yep. for a couple next couple of weeks. It's just saying flat out, you know, we will not have rec soccer. No, we won't, and it's going to be a shame. So if there's anybody out there, anyone that can handle the rec department, it's not a terribly huge commitment. But it's, it's not. It's just it's really a matter of just organizing it. You don't yeah. even need to know anything about soccer. You just need to be able to organize it, get the right kids on the right team, call the coaches, delegate it, and yep. bam, you've done soccer. The coaches and all that are in place, correct? Or well, usually the they step part. up. That yeah, yeah, right. Coaches yeah. usually aren't too much trouble to yeah. find. So we just need someone to organize that and take the sign ups. Try to try to make it work. So, I mean, there's still a lot of kids in town. The school has got a lot of kids down there, and. Um, I'm trying to plea as best we can to get someone to to to, to take over the uh, rec department. So, so I was actually went down by the rec field the other day and thinking to myself, you know, if we lose the rec department, we're going to lose control of the field, and it's just a number of it's kind of a number of things that will fall if we don't get this up and running. And someone doesn't step up. I mean, I know absolutely nothing about it, so. But there's got to be a there's got to be a parent out there somewhere. It is being advertised currently. Yes. Yep. So, like I say, this is a a plea to try to get the rec department up and running. So, or, or keep it running. It is up and running now, but we need to keep it going. So, the kids are our future. Is there, <clears throat> is there money involved, a salary or anything? For I don't believe so. Um, no, and I don't it's know. Always been a volunteer in all the surrounding towns. I don't know if we can come up with any 
a few pittance to throw at it or not, but I mean, there's nothing budgeted right now for it, so. Uh, that might entice some people. Yeah, so if we could get someone interested to, to continue it through this year, maybe we can look at next, next town budget, to maybe put some money in there and try to, try to keep it going that way. Um, you know, it is a time commitment and money, of course, is a driver, but our kids should be the biggest driver for this one, so. Okay, anything Welcome. else come before the board? Do we hear a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. I second. <laughs> Scared me there for a minute. Play you <laughs> want to be here a while. <laughs> Buddha seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? All opposed?